Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Paragi City Zoo. Um, I hope you liked the first episode, I got a lot of good feedback, uh, so thanks for that. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch that first. I go over the kind of the background of the park and I check out the Indian area. Um, this time we're back at the entrance. Uh, I'm just gonna show you a small change that I've done here. Uh, and then I'm gonna walk you through the Asia Trail. And the, then we're gonna go over to the estate and the children's zoo. Nothing has changed here at the actual entrance. I've just implemented one small thing that I'm pretty proud of. Um, some of you might have seen just Goron and his recreation of uh, Bexibergen, where he's done um, lots and lots of signs with using this, uh, the new font pieces we got with the aquatic updates. Uh, so I've just kind of taken after him and done a bunch of those. Um, the first one is this just kind of generic info board. Um, I imagine there would be like a times for shows and feedings all around the park that you that the guest needs to uh, needs to know when they come into the park um, and the tiger at the bottom is uh, made by just Goren for his um, info signs that he uses in Bexibergen. I've also made this map of the entire zoo uh, using the commas uh, with the aquatic updates and just copied around to make uh, yeah, a map of the entire zoo, actually. And even though I haven't finished all of the areas, I have finished the layout. So this is how it's going to look when it's all done. Um, right now we're here at the entrance. Uh, this big red circle is just kind of the entrance area. Um, last time uh, we went through, here are the flamingos. Uh, we went around here and then we went over to the Indian area, which, which is here. So we went like this. This is the tigers. Uh, and this is the um, snow leopards, and here are the rhinos and uh, antelopes. Uh, today we're going to start here in the entrance area. We're going to walk down here. Uh, and we're not going to go under the road here, but we're going to go over here. Uh, and into the Asia Trail, it starts around here. And we're going to go around here. Uh, and then up to a more uh, generic part of the zoo, which I'm hoofstock. And past uh, the aviaries that I have put over here. And up to the estate that you can see here. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you more about it when we get there. Last time we checked out the aquarium and the flamingos over there. Um, this time we're going to head right and down this path. In the background here is a, it's a pretty large building that I haven't finished yet. So we're not going to look at that. But we're gonna walk down this ramp here. And here is a small tease for what's coming up um, in this episode. First we have this aviary. Um, you've seen this before. I used this exact aviary in the Indian area. And uh, nothing in there right now. Please give us birds front here. Uh, then this is probably the first habitat I made in this entire zoo. Um, it's empty though. Uh, it's supposed to be a gibbon habitat. Um, it's inspired uh, by um, Kolmården here in Sweden, which is the only gibbon habitat I have seen. So just a mess of uh, trees and branches and uh, ropes. Uh, it would be really cool to see some gibbon swinging around here, but uh, you'll just have to imagine it for now. Um, over here, um, up here is the um, is a it's a large road, and the zoo continues on the other side of it. But uh, we're not gonna go over there today. Can give you a little tease though. In there you can see a sign for what's over there. Here's another view of the gibbons, or not gibbons. And as we come around here, we have the beginning of the Asia Trail. So here are red pandas, and this is only one part of their habitat, so it seems to be... Nope, there is one. 
but as you can see I have this um, walkway for them to and that connects to another part of their habitat and just on cue here is one using it right now ah two actually perfect so they use this uh, quite a lot actually walking back and forth between their two habitats uh, it's something I saw in uh, when I was at Copenhagen Zoo uh, about a year ago. Uh, I don't think they had two separate habitats though. They just had a large walkway that they could walk in and out of around the habitat. You're done? Yeah, alright. And here is the official beginning of the Acer Trail. Should probably put up a sign or something, but um, haven't done that, so whatever. Um, on the left we have a glitching zookeeper, or he's just doing some breakdancing. Cool. Um, there, here is their, the second part of the red panda habitat, and I imagine this would be something that was added on uh, later, yeah, because it looks a lot more modern. So I imagine that the, the first part was their, uh, their original habitat and then it was expanded. I have four red pandas in here right now. I think um, that's too many. Um, I'm pretty sure red pandas prefer to be just a male and a female, but uh, I'm not sure. So I won't talk much more about that. Here is an info sign that I've made myself and um, just some info about the red pandas obviously we turn around and uh, we have the japanese macaque over here um, i tried to build this habitat with um, with the hot pools in mind that the hot springs that they use in japan that are pretty famous for that's why i have a, a lot of the fog going here and this is actually the first time i've ever seen a monkey in the water just as I come in here. I was going to complain how about they never use the water, but uh, here they are. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, glitching about, of course. Nothing special. Japanese macaques um, haven't actually seen a real habitat with Japanese macaques, so um, they didn't really know what to go up other than those famous photos of them sitting in the hot springs and just chilling. I did add these uh, cute statues though, so I really love them. Uh, just adorable. We're gonna leave the macaques and we're gonna head over past the red pandas and to this uh, accessible ramp that I put over here. Because here you can see a glimpse of the next habitat that we're gonna see in just a minute. Sadly it's... Um, an empty habitat because we don't have the Asian fishing cat that I wanted to be in there. Um, obviously a lot of bamboo. Um, not sure how well bamboo would fit in uh, a Swedish uh, climate, but uh, it looks cool, so uh, let's not think too much about it. And yes, here is the habitat for the fishing cat. Um, it's all built by using the African bunting ropes. It took a long time, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, I don't think it's a functional habitat in game, so I haven't put any any animals in there. Um, if we ever get an Asian fishing cat, I might have to redo it so it actually works. But for now, it just looks cool. Um, I have this little I have this little viewing area here where you can get a little closer to it and hopefully see it climb around on the structures and the back fish building in the back. And yeah, if we go back out, um, I have a habitat for the Formosan black bear. I imagine this habitat was built around the 90s maybe, uh, originally built for pandas, but uh, since they are extremely expensive to keep, they retrofitted it into a Formosan black bear. And yeah. Don't know why the path is glitching right here, but uh, 
Just imagine you're on a roller coaster. Back there, I have some backstage buildings. Uh, he's happy about it, and so am I. We're gonna check that out later um, when we come around. And that's the end of the Asia Trail, actually. Um, but we're gonna keep on going. Um, like I said, uh, up here I have some more generic parts of the zoo, uh, just some pens for hoofstock and such. Uh, these are probably the most outdated habitats in the entire zoo, but they work, so they haven't fixed or updated them yet. Uh, first we have uh, the Niala, and their little pen, nothing special really. And then we have the gems book right here. We're gonna keep going in just a second. First, I want to show off these aviaries that I've built here. Um, these aviaries are again inspired by the Houston Zoo, just as the flamingo habitat. And um, yeah, not sure what kind of birds would be, would be put in here. Just um, anything that fits, really. Uh, behind this green plank, um, I haven't finished up yet. I actually have someone else building in this part of the zoo, so that's gonna be for a later episode. But more aviaries, and over here we have a large aviary that would house, uh, again, a raptor or an eagle or some type of larger bird. Not sure. Yes, we're gonna keep looking at these generic hoof stocks. Like I said, the gems book, and over there we have the, the Bactrian camel, I think it's called in English. Just call it a camel in Swedish. Yeah, um, but over here I have what I call the picnic lawn. Uh, it's just like this big oak tree in the middle of a huge lawn where I imagine uh, you could well have your picnic, as the name says. And I walked past, but this is another map. And um, so let's just talk about where we've been. So we started here at the entrance. Uh, this red dot is where we are now. As I told you, we went down the stairs or the ramp over here. The gibbons are here, went past the red pandas into the Japanese macaques, around the corner to the fishing cat and the Formosan black bear. Then we went up here, past the Niala, past the uh, Gamsbok. Here are the camels and we're just at the intersection right here. As, as you can see in the back, here is the estate and the children's farm or children's zoo. And we're gonna head over there right now. Yeah, so I think I mentioned this in the first episode, but kind of my headcanon about this zoo is that it was land owned by like a rich family or something and then it was donated to the city to build a zoo so this is where the the, the older rich family would have lived back in the days um and the surrounding uh, farm sounds weird but yeah the surrounding farm buildings that comes with owning a large estate so here are stables and in here would be horses um, I'm sure they would be taken out for like pony rides or something, but uh, I have, haven't put up uh, a special area for that. We're gonna come back there uh, soon. And over here is the children farm or the children's zoo, uh, where we show off the children. No, but uh, where the children could go into into these um, pens with um, and feed the farm animals. So in here would be goats where you can walk in over here and uh, get some food and yeah, feed the goats and the kids and stuff. Um, but as we don't have any goats, this is empty. As is the pig pen. Um, I imagine you wouldn't walk in here, but you could feed them through the fence or just look at them. And 
same with this larger pen here with the, where there would be cows, like a couple at least. Not huge, but um, big enough for two or three cows, I imagine. But let's look more at this large building. I'm not sure what it's called. In, it's called a mansion? Maybe it's not a mansion, but estate, mansion, whatever. Um, I don't think anyone would live here now. It's it, probably offices for the zoo or or some organization. I'm not sure. Uh, but over here is a, is a small cafe that they would have retrofitted. It's empty right now. You can only see the angry archer. He's angry because it's an empty cafe. Don't mind that. Back over here are backstage. We're not going to look at that because it's not finished yet. But we're going to walk around here. And here are uh, these stables are inspired by some stables on my way to school that look basically basically exactly like this. Um, it's a very common Swedish design for stables and I'm sure it's common in most of Europe to be honest. This um, yellow um, wooden building would be the old house where like the help for the family would uh, would be living while they didn't work. So like the servants and the chef or whatever. Um, again, no one lives here now. Obviously it's used for offices or whatever. But yes, here you can see the actual front of the building or the mansion or house. Um, so I actually, this is actually based on a real house that I saw when I was out walking in Stockholm um, last summer. Just kind of walked past it, saw it, liked it, uh, looked it up on Google Street View, and uh, yeah, copied it. It's it's probably a lot bigger than the real house, uh, but uh, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. And as I said, over there are the stables and like a, a tool shed or something. But yeah, this area would be open to like the zoo visitors. Uh, There's not much to do here. Maybe some pony riding or, or like guided tours or something. But um, I don't imagine a lot of people would come back here, even though it's open for everyone. Um, over there are some. Um, was it? Was it? A, a bee, bee, beekeeping bee house. I'm not sure what it's called. Bees. Um, the stables, once again, probably pretty old, built in the 19th century or something, um, where they keep the horses now. And yeah, this that's pretty much it for today. Um, can walk over here and pass to the picnic lawn and just check this last area out. This, also a part of the children's zoo, uh, but a little more uh, renovated so, like with a cafe that you can, uh, where you can buy some ice cream or whatever to use or to eat, <laughs> not use, at the picnic lawn. Once again, uh, behind the green plank, I have someone else doing some work and that's probably the next or no, not the next, maybe. The episode after that. Oh well, we'll see. Here is a, a small playground. Don't love it. Um, this was built before Jess Gordon released his playground on the par on the workshop. I'm probably just gonna use that and update this playground. But it will do for now. Um, the next episode we're gonna check out the Scandinavian area and the Arctic area. I'm just going to leave you with this little view and I can imagine you'll guess what's in there. Um, that's it for me right now. Ah, perfect timing. That's it for me and um, this episode. Um, yeah, do all the normal YouTube things like comment, subscribe. Uh, I don't know when the, the next episode will be up. Um, don't hold your breath, but uh, I've been liking the reception my first video got, so I'll definitely keep doing these videos. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I'll read everyone. I'll try to answer 
everyone and yeah that's it see you next time